We are celebrating the supposed sesquicentennial, that's 150 years of Speaker's Corner at Hyde Park. This is supposed to be some bastion of free speech, although for much of the last two years it was illegal to linger too long in Hyde Park or any other park, notwithstanding the alleged free speech zone. The free speech zone ought to be the entire United Kingdom, in fact the entire British Commonwealth but we'll have to take 100 square feet as a start. Toby Young, founder of the Free Speech Union, was among those out over the weekend to mark the anniversary, but he noted the arrest at Speaker's Corner of the Christian preacher Hatron Tash. Our police is here today. She said that one of the things the police said to her by way of explanation for why they had dragged her away yesterday, arrested her, even though charges haven't been pressed, that's usually the modus operandi, is that some of the people in the park yesterday thought that her t-shirt which depicted one of the Charlie Hebdo cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad was offensive oh we can't have a yeah, offensive t-shirt uh, so after 150 years of speakers corner you can now get arrested if there are people in the vicinity who find your t-shirt offensive Toby Young joins me now Toby uh, we're basically losing the entire habits of free speech aren't we we are. I mean, one of the things that struck me when I was doing a little bit of background research on Speaker's Corner is that uh, when it was established in 1872, so exactly 150 years ago, that was only 13 years after J.S. Mill wrote On Liberty. And the philosophical mm -hmm. foundation for free speech, the general support for free speech amongst the British intelligentsia at that time, he was a liberal MP after all, um, uh, was so much greater than it is now. And arguably, um, free speech was actually on much surer, uh, a much surer footing then, 150 years ago, than it is now. And the arrest of Hatton Tash was just an unfortunate symbol of uh, the fact that free speech, even, even at Speaker's Corner, is, is on life support. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's a kind of symbolism there. Increasingly, we think there's one correct attitude on all kinds of subjects. Islam, climate change, COVID vaccines, and anything else should be banned. But at the same time, as we saw all the, during all that je suis Shaoli thing, there's still a lot of people who like the sort of frisson, the kudos of appearing to support free expression. Yeah, that's right, except um, at the um, event earlier today to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Speaker's Corner, there weren't that many people present. Um, uh, it wasn't covered at all by the mainstream media. I think, you know, uh, the Je suis Charlie thing uh, seems now like a distant memory. Uh, um, and, um, you know, during the um, Oslo attacks, um, on, on the Oslo attack on mm -hmm. Friday, I don't know if you've been following the aftermath, uh, the analysis, the kind of post-mortem that's been taking mm -hmm. place in the Norwegian media. We're about to run a piece on it in the Daily Skeptic. But um, mm -hmm. uh, all, all the usual suspects have been blamed for this um, terrorist attack. Uh, in part on a gay bar in downtown Oslo on Friday night. Mm. Um, uh, one pundit blamed Jordan Peterson, but anti-woke culture warriors, oh, yes. people who haven't been genuflecting mm. uh, at the Holy Temple of Pride, are the people to blame, apparently. Mm. Absolutely no one in the mainstream media, mm. no mainstream uh, Norwegian politicians have even mentioned the fact that the uh, terrorist uh, was um, a, a radicalised Muslim an adherent of radical Islam. Um, uh, you know, that's not to blame, mm. apparently, uh, for this murderous assault on homosexuals in downtown Oslo. No, it's all to do, it's all the fault of Jordan Peterson, apparently. I wonder how long people will be happy to actually live in a world of lies like that. Well, um, uh, I think we can take some comfort from the fact that um, alternative media platforms um, outside the mainstream where people are a little bit freer um, to say what they really think, to speak their minds, to challenge prevailing orthodoxies, uh, things like the Daily Skeptic, but you know, in America, um, uh, uh, the Daily Signal, um, platforms like Substack, mm. Ghost, uh, even YouTube, mm. even though it is controlled by big tech, uh, are becoming outlets for people whose voices can't be heard. 
anymore in the mainstream media. And I think we can draw some comfort from that. And uh, the success of, these alter of this kind of alternative media landscape, I think, shows just how unhappy most people are with um, the conformism, uh, the craven um, uh, uh, beholdenness <laughs> to prevailing narratives in the mainstream yeah. media. Oh, yeah, terrible thing, conformism. Thank, thank you, Toby. Here's to the next 150 years of free speech or the way things are going. Here's to the next 150 days of it.